Dr. John Runyon here, and we're putting together a few videos to talk about all the instructions that you need to have before your surgery and the instructions for after the surgery to really make it easy and give you all the information that you may need. So I hope you enjoy. Congratulations for taking this step to a beautiful, healthy, new smile. We are so excited to be part of this life-changing journey. Care of your mouth after surgery has an important effect on healing. Swelling, discomfort, and restricted jaw function are expected and should not cause alarm. These may be minimized by following the instructions below. It is strongly urged that they be followed. Please note there is no charge for your post-operative care in this office. What not to do. Do not smoke for a minimum of three weeks after surgery. Do not rinse, spit, or create any suction by using straws or swishing vigorously. Do not touch the surgical site. Do not lift or pull on your lip to look at the stitches. This can cause damage to the wound site and tear the sutures. Do not take aspirin or products containing aspirin for at least one week. Do not take narcotic prescription pain medication or any anti-inflammatory medication on an empty stomach. Do not continue any medications if you experience an allergic reaction. Do not drive or operate heavy machinery while taking prescription pain medications. Do not exercise, play sports, or participate in any strenuous activity for 48 hours. Do not eat foods that have seeds or hulls. Do not eat extremely hot or spicy foods or foods with sharp edges such as chips or pretzels the day of your surgery. Do not brush or floss on the surgical site for at least four weeks. This includes electric toothbrushes and water picks. Do not use alcohol-based mouthwashes for at least eight weeks. With sinus lift. Do not hold in your sneezes or sneeze with a closed mouth. Do not blow your nose. Dab if needed. Do not bend over. Try to keep your head above the level of your heart. Do not swim, scuba dive, play a wind instrument, blow up balloons, or participate in any other activities that cause pressure changes in your mouth. With sedation, do not drive or operate a motorized vehicle for 24 hours. You must have a driver to and from your appointment and stay with you for 24 hours following your appointment. Do not drink alcoholic beverages, take tranquilizers, or take sleeping pills for the next 24 hours. Do not make any critical or legal decisions for the next 24 hours. What to do. Leave your gauze in for at least 60 minutes. Replace with new gauze as needed. Utilize a dry tea bag for heavy bleeding by biting down on them on the wound site. Keep ice packs on your face for 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off, as much as possible to help with swelling. Continue this regimen for 24 to 48 hours. Drink an abundance of water and other hydrating fluids. Reintroduce solid, nutrient-rich foods as tolerated. Stock up on foods such as mashed potatoes, macaroni and cheese, spaghetti, nutritious shakes, and other soft, nutrient-dense options. For nausea, slowly sip a clear, carbonated beverage. Follow up with a mild tea or clear soup, and then easily digestible foods like toast or jello. Take Tylenol or ibuprofen every four to six hours, following directions from the bottle, for mild pain and discomfort. Take prescription medications as directed. Get plenty of rest. Resume your normal dental routine, including brushing and flossing after 24 hours, avoiding your surgery sites. Use a salt water rinse, one teaspoon of salt to one cup of water, or Paradex oral rinse if prescribed, two times daily for seven to ten days. Come in for your scheduled follow-up appointments. Full arch procedures. Eat only foods you can cut with a plastic fork or knife. With sinus lift, Utilize Sudafed and Dimatap to reduce sinus congestion. Sleep with your head raised. We recommend sitting at a 90 degree angle. With sedation, 
Have a driver to take you to and from your appointment and stay with you for 24 hours following. Rest and relax for a minimum of 12 hours after your surgery. Hey guys, I wanted to review some common scenarios that you may face after surgery, and there's gonna be various degrees of intensity of these scenarios based on how big your surgery was. And some of your previous experiences with surgery will also correlate to the mouth surgery that we have just done. But I want to review them with you so you really have a good idea of what to expect because it's most of this stuff's very common and can be obvious, but some of it isn't so obvious. So we want to be very clear and give you all the information that you may need to really get through this post-operative care very quickly, very easily, and without any problems at all. So after surgery, some light bleeding from the surgical areas is to be expected. You're gonna leave here with gauze in your mouth, and we want you to leave it in there for, you know, 20 to 45 minutes, just kind of based on how much bleeding you may be experiencing. But before you leave our office, we have verified that the bleeding has subsided. As you get moving, as your heart rate gets going, some bleeding might come back. And when you mix that with saliva, it can really make it seem like there's more bleeding than there really is. So if you notice that when you spit or when you look at your saliva, it has a very red color to it, that typically is just some blood mixed with saliva, which really appears to be more blood than there really is. But in any case, what we want you to do is get that gauze back in your mouth. We want you to have firm pressure on the area. And we want you to do that for 45 minutes to 60 minutes without any interruption. So very firm pressure right on the surgical area for 45 to 60 minutes. If you do that, vast, vast majority of the time, that's gonna stop all bleeding and there'll be no issues going further. If by chance the bleeding were to come back later with that increased heart rate or, or movement, it can really get that bleeding maybe to stir back up. We also have included tea bags into your take-home kit. Those tea bags are gonna be very beneficial to put pressure right on the site. You can put gauze right on top of the tea bags, and there's actually tannic acid in those tea bags, which is gonna help uh, dissipate the bleeding and get that really to clot up well. So we've kind of provided you with the proper tools to stop any type of bleeding that may occur. Swelling and then subsequent bruising uh, maybe after a day or a few days. The swelling is very normal. We expect that to occur really with any surgery, not just mouth surgery. What we advise you to do immediately is get ice packs on the area, cycle those ice packs on and off every 20 minutes. And we really recommend that for really 24 to 48 hours. Another thing you can do to combat the swelling is to keep your head elevated and even sleep a little upright. What that's gonna do is help the swelling kind of drain down below and not accumulate in the, the jaw region. So those two things are going to really help with swelling. But swelling is normal, and you can do a lot to dissipate the swelling. We've also given you anti-inflammatory medication that's going to dissipate that swelling from an internal basis, so really recommend following those medication directions very specifically. Now, if you do get some swelling, after a few days, not uncommon to see bruising. That bruising can be in the surgical site and sometimes even away from the surgical site. Again, not uncommon at all, and we expect that to happen, especially with people that are more commonly will bruise in other areas of your body. It is not a sign of a problem, and typically that bruising will go away within a week to a couple weeks. So we consider that normal and no need for concern. Obviously, we always invite you with anything that seems outside the realm of normal to contact us. We are readily available for any concerns that you may have, and we'll always see you in the office for any type of uh, post-operative care, and we can discuss that during that call. All right, guys, after surgery, your body's healing, your body is sending it sells up to the sites to try to get things to heal and not get infected and, and close up all the tissues. So your body's going through a lot. What can commonly occur is you notice that you're gonna feel tired, you're gonna feel lethargic. We always, always, always focus on proper nutrition and hydration so that you can give your body the fuel and the water that it needs to heal. Your body will also sometimes elevate the temperature due to that response to the healing. So what we tell everybody, it's very common to see a slight elevation in your temperature. 
a few days after surgery. That is not a problem and it's no need for concern. In a lot of our surgeries, we are placing sutures in the mouth to help hold the tissue together. Sometimes those sutures are resorbable and sometimes those sutures are non-resorbable, meaning uh, we have to take them out for you. In either case, it is very common for the sutures to have uh, one of the knots come untied and therefore you have a lengthy string in your mouth. If that does occur, it's nothing to be alarmed about. It's no need for, for this to be an emergency, but we do want that to be taken care of so you don't have this annoying string in your mouth. If you feel comfortable, we do suggest that you take a clean pair of scissors and just trim the end that you can visibly see. Just kind of remove that annoying string. If it's something you do not feel comfortable doing or you cannot get to it for some reason, we do want you to contact us, come on into the office, and we will cut that suture for you because we definitely don't want you dragging that suture around for several days before your follow-up visit. So with a long suture string, call us and we'll take care of that for you. All right, guys, so this next part I'm going to talk about are situations that constitute a dental emergency. Now, what I want to be very clear here is that any time if you face a situation that you feel is a life-threatening emergency, we want you to immediately call 911 and get yourself to an emergency care facility. I will then be contacted and will follow up with you later if that were to occur, but we want you to know that any life that an emergency, we want you to get to an emergency care facility as soon as possible. However, if it is a dental emergency and something that is not life-threatening, I want you to contact us through the methods that we have listed on your post-operative care sheet immediately so we can take care of you. Here are some things that we're gonna consider a dental emergency, but what I wanna be very clear is we are open and here to help you in all situations. So when in doubt, please feel free to contact us and we will work through any problem that you may have. You have uh, jaw soreness or stiffness that is so severe that you are unable to open your mouth. Now, that is gonna be a problem, obviously, because you're not able to eat or drink, so that is not something that we wanna wait two, three, four days before we address that. So anything where you cannot open your mouth, we want you to call us right away. That is different than it hurts to open your mouth. If it hurts to open your mouth, we're gonna want you to do the instructions we spoke about with physical therapy to try to stretch and massage and get that jaw moving. You have a sharp spot on your temporary teeth that is causing a very distinct cut or rubbing mark on your cheek or tongue. That is not something we want you to sit through and let it get worse. So we want you to contact us right away and we will come in and get that adjusted. Sometimes these temporaries, they get a little sharp spot on them that we get that we unfortunately will miss or it can develop later. So if that happens, we want you to get a hold of us and we'll get you taken care of right away. Pain that is not able to be managed with the medication that we give you as it's taken properly. Pain is a very normal uh, sensation after surgery, and we do expect pain for those first three days. So any pain within those first three days, we're gonna manage with the medications we give you. Outside of those first three days, that pain that is not able to be managed with the medication, we're starting to think there may be a problem, so we want you to get a hold of us. So the rule of thumb that we kind of say out there is, after three days, if the pain medication we're not we're giving you is not managing it, we want you to get a hold of us right away. Bleeding that does not subside after 24 hours. So if it's been a whole day and you've done all the techniques that we've given you to stop that slow bleeding, we're gonna want you to get a hold of us right away and we will meet you in the office to get that bleeding taken care of. So bleeding is something that can be normal for the first 12 to 24 hours, but after that 24 hour mark, we're gonna to wanna to see you and get that taken care of. Also, on that same sort of premise, is a fever stuck around after three days. So the first 48 to 72 hours, 
a slight elevation in temperature, we're thinking that's normal. If it's been three days and you still have that slight elevated fever, we're gonna wanna hear from you so we can kind of walk through some steps to maybe manage that. The last on our list is gonna be uh, any type of allergic reaction may experience relative to the medications or maybe even on very, very rare occurrences, the appliance that we put in your mouth. So any type of allergy that you have, that is something that we constitute as a dental emergency. So we want you to get a hold of us right away and uh, we'll walk through the situation, maybe change medications or sometimes even add medications to handle the allergy that may be uh, occurring. Also the same with uh, the prosthetic that's in your mouth. If you're noticing some allergic response to the materials, we're gonna wanna see you and get that taken care of immediately. So not something that we want you to wait several days for. It is our sincere desire that we keep you as comfortable as possible after your surgery and throughout your entire healing process. Our main goal is to get you healthy and get you feeling good as quickly as possible. We also want you to know that we are here for you at all times if you need any questions answered or any type of follow-up care needed. We're gonna give you several uh, materials. They're gonna have contact numbers on them, including our dental website. The phone number for us at our office is 614-775-1300. Option three is gonna get you to the right uh, category to get a hold of our team. For all emergency needs, you're gonna call 614-595-2378. You can also text that number uh, and we will respond to that call or text. And again, I wanna note that any life-threatening emergency, you are gonna immediately call 911 and get yourself to an emergency care facility and you are not going to contact us on any level until you're into that emergency care facility and they've gotten you taken care of.